Welcome to Designing Spaces Think Green, a special edition of the show that's all about you, your space, and living the greener lifestyle. I'm Ted Brunson. With energy costs on the rise, we are constantly looking for new ways to live more efficient and sustainable lives. From the way we take care of our lawn to building our homes, everything we do affects the environment. So the goal here is to treat the environment as a major contributor to our health, economy, and general well-being. We have a great lineup of topics to help you and your family live a more eco-friendly lifestyle. So let's get started right now and think green. With the rising cost of energy, more and more homeowners are understanding the importance of having an energy efficient home. How energy efficient is your home? Well, with recent technologies, a lot of households are operating at very low energy costs. Our Heidi Drennan is in Country Club Hills, Illinois with the Energy Doctor. Take a look. With the rising demand for energy, our nation's power grids are working to the limits during peak hours. What can we do about it? Become energy efficient aware. Not only will you contribute to lowering demand, you'll lower costs. And now, you're thinking green. Designing Spaces Think Green has picked this home for a special walkthrough. We'll take a look at what has been done, as well as what could be done to reduce electrical consumption. I'm downstairs in the man cave of this home, and there is a lot of energy being used down here. The more areas of your home that you make energy efficient, the bigger the savings. And I am going to try to add to my savings. Or not. With the popularity of plug-in electric cars, many utilities like ComEd offer online calculators and other resources that can help you choose the right vehicle. They can even tell you how much money you'll save. Before we begin our walkthrough, a few questions popped into my head to help set the stage for what we're about to see. We're in a Midwest home, and though there's no such thing as the typical American home, Energy usage here is strikingly different from the usage of a typical home in the Southwest. Okay, so Mariel, generally speaking, which systems or appliances in our home consume the most energy? Yeah, basically you're looking at your heating and cooling, your lighting, kitchen appliances, electronics, and your refrigerator. Those are the main energy users in a home. So here they have the HDTV. Now, different TVs, you have the LCD, the plasma, is it true that they consume different amounts of energy? They do. The plasma TVs, we all know, have a really great picture. Right. Those are the ones that use the most energy. Next is your LCD TVs. Those are a little bit more efficient. And the new TVs that are on the market now that are the LED TVs, those are the most efficient. Leaving game consoles on when not in use uses about the same amount of energy as a 100 watt light bulb. Be sure to turn these off when not in use. Better yet, put them on a power strip and turn off the power strip when not in use. Have you ever seen this sticker on your electric appliances? And do you wonder what exactly it means? Energy Star is a program through the US Environmental Protection Agency and the US Department of Energy. And it's a great way for consumers to find the most efficient appliances. So for an electronic or appliance to carry that logo, they have to meet very strict energy use guidelines. So if you're shopping for a new appliances, that's a good clue for the most efficient ones out there. What are the signs that our home may not be operating with good energy efficiency? Probably one of the first things you're going to notice is your electricity and your gas bills are probably higher than you would like. Okay. You're probably going to notice some areas that are too hot or too cold in your home. In the winter time, you might notice that there's ice hanging down, you're having ice dam problems. Those are some of the clues that can tell you that you need to look at a little bit more into being energy efficient. Sure. All right. Well, all good to know. This room alone has a number of electrical devices. Can using a power strip like this one help us save energy? It sure can. One of the things that people don't always realize is some of your electronics, when they're turned off, they're still using power. So by plugging your DVD player and your game console into a power strip, and when you're finished playing, turning off the power strip, that can save some energy. Great, now they also have a laptop here. What about that? Sure, another easy thing you can do is enable the power management system on your computer. 
the Energy Star website has detailed instructions that'll help you if you have a Mac or if you have a PC, find out exactly how to do that. So again, another easy way to save energy. Great. Next stop is the kitchen. Appliances that use electricity are the refrigerator, the stovetop, the dishwasher, and small appliances. Time to make our way down into the basement, where the washer and dryer suck up a lot of energy. As a matter of fact, almost 90% of the energy consumed by a washing machine goes to heating water. Let's start with the washer. One of the things that we were always taught is that you had to use warm water or hot water in order to get your clothes clean. Well, now there are new laundry detergent formulations that work with cold water wash, and then save the hot or warm water for when you have really dirty or oily stains on your clothes. So what about the dryer? What can we do to save energy there? Mm -hmm. First off, you wanna make sure that you clean the lint filter every time. That'll mm -hmm. make sure that the air can flow through the dryer, mm -hmm. or you can hang up those clothes and line dry them. Sure. Don't Just even like a, use it. Exactly. <laughs> I see they have the white foam up here. That's insulation, right? That's right. And insulation is so important because it helps keep the heat inside of your home in the winter and keeps you more comfortable. Same thing in the summer. It's going to keep that hot air from getting inside of your home so that cool air conditioning stays inside. Right. And so why insulation is important is it's blocking air, but it's also adding heat resistance value is a great way to save about 20% on your heating and cooling costs is by having your home air sealed and insulated. Sealing and insulating the envelope or shell of your home, its outer walls, ceiling, windows, doors, and floors is often the most cost-effective way to improve energy efficiency and comfort. So how valuable is a programmable thermostat in saving energy dollars? Programmable thermostats are great. They can save you about 10% on your heating and cooling costs over the course of the year. So what's great about them is they can automatically turn down your heat at night and during the day when you're gone at work, but then bring that temperature right back up before you arrive home. The important thing about them is you do need to use the program. They don't save energy if you have them overridden and you're not using the program. Oh, okay. There are other ways to save additional money once the house has been made efficient. Incentives. So if I'm a homeowner and I wanted a ComEd Energy Doctor to come over and evaluate my home, can I do that? Well, we have a program that's kind of like that, our Home Energy Savings Program. A professional will come out and evaluate your home. They'll look at the insulation level. They'll put together a detailed report for ways that you can save energy. There's many utilities like ComEd that offer incentives and rebate programs to help their customers save energy. ComEd has our Smart Ideas program to help customers. For example, we have a lighting incentive program where customers can get discounted compact fluorescent lamps at their local home stores. You can save about 75% energy compared to using incandescent lamps. Another program we have is our fridge or freezer recycling program. So customers with a second refrigerator or freezer, those can be costing you about $150 a year. So call ComEd, we'll pick up that fridge or freezer and we'll pay you $35. Okay, I'll be doing that. And is there a website that we can visit? Sure, it's comed.com or your local utility. Fantastic. Well, it's been great to get all this useful information straight from a ComEd Energy Doctor. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Terrific. We will have a link to that website at our website, designingspaces.tv, where you can click on the Think Green section and watch this show again. You can use it to make your home more energy efficient. For Designing Spaces, I'm Heidi Drennan in Country Club Hills, Illinois. A major part of making any home more energy efficient are the materials used to construct it. Now we here at Think Green are always looking for innovative new technologies that help homes be more eco-friendly. Today we're going to take a look at a very important component of a home with our friends at Apex Block. Now, Pay attention to this segment because you're going to be seeing a lot more from these people and their new materials that make your home more efficient and sustainable, thus greener. This isn't a typical housing subdivision, and this isn't a typical construction site. Here in the gently rolling hills of Eagle Point in southern Oregon, 
21 homes will be constructed of Apex Block, a lightweight insulated building block that's called the greenest wall system in the world. Naturally, designing spaces think green, how to come out and have a look. Dale Scenes is CEO and president of the company, which has made Apex Blocks since 2003 out of recycled EPS or polystyrene foam. The stuff that's often used for packing and shipping. It's non-biodegradable and a lot of it winds up in landfills. In fact, only about 12% of it is recycled in the U.S. By building this home with Apex Blocks, about 2,500 pounds of polystyrene will be put to good use instead of being thrown in the trash. The reason for Apex Block and my involvement with it is I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to help in my part and my way, and that's taking EPS out of the environment, reducing energy costs. Over the lifespan of a building, a family gets to save money, they get some financial relief and they have the benefit of having the best sound structure around them to keep them safe and warm and that to hand that down and perpetuate that through generations. When this home is finished, its owner will have a sturdy, environmentally friendly place to live. Apex Block provides excellent insulation and can cut the homeowner's heating and cooling expenses in half versus a home built with conventional wood materials. The reason why the Apex Block is so safe is what we've done is we've replaced what Mother Nature naturally built, which, was, which is wood. Wood and lumber have had its place in, in American building in its history. But what we have are six inch tubes of concrete, reinforced concrete with rebar. So what you have is an integrated structure. There's just not vertical wood, there's a horizontal and vertical grid system of six inches of concrete reinforced with rebar, which also with the roof system is a continuous pour. So from the foundation and the footing, all the way from the slab, all the way to the roof, is one continuous interlocking piece of concrete reinforced with steel. The blocks can't rot or form mold and mildew because they don't absorb or retain moisture. And these walls are much more quiet than standard wood frame walls. They're also strong, protecting the home against floods, fire, high winds, earthquakes, and infestation from rats, termites, and other insects. This wall system will protect against F5 tornadoes or level four hurricanes. What that means is 250 mile an hour sustained winds or gusting winds. We've tested this block and it withstood up to four hours of 2000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. For four hours, wood ignites in 12 seconds. So what you have is a very safe, comfortable home for you and your family. Apex even demonstrated this by trying to blow up a wall with C4 explosives. Nope, still standing. Well, we like to think nothing like this will ever happen here in peaceful Eagle Point. For contractors, using Apex blocks can be a great choice. For one thing, they simplify the construction process when compared to other green building methods. Doug Lystra is the owner of Majestic Builders, which is building this home in Eagle Point. The biggest thing that sold me from the first time I saw this, 80% um, 80, 80 of this is recycled material, saves it from going in the landfill. This, this is way ahead of its time right now, and I, I think I know our subdivision here, uh, I'd like to see every one of our houses be in this product. That's our plan right now. Unlike other insulated concrete forms or concrete blocks, Apex Block fits together in a trademarked keystone interlocking system, which eliminates the time and cost of expensive bracing and connection methods. The result is a block that costs about $5 or less per square foot. Another difference is that Apex forms can be flat, waffle grid, or screen grid designs, so there's plenty of design flexibility. As you can see, these walls are going up quickly. In fact, experienced workers can build up to 2,500 square feet per day.
one thing's for sure, homeowners in this new subdivision will feel good knowing that these walls are as green as the beautiful trees surrounding them. We want a better awareness of alternative building systems versus traditional wood construction. There's a better way to build. There's a better way for the environment. And we have to be conscientious of it and take ourselves further and further ahead. For more information, check out their website at apexblock.com. Now let's talk about something else green, the lawn. Now most of us know the negative aspects of herbicides. So how do we still have a lawn without weeds but not use herbicides? Well here with that tale on how to have a more eco-friendly lawn is Andrew Craigham. Every spring our attention turns to getting the house and yard looking their best for the summer. And one area that often presents its own set of problems? The lawn. How we love that sea of beautiful green, an outdoor carpet of botanical perfection. <laughs> But then the unwanted guests arrive, the weeds. You've tried to kick them off the property before, but it seems like no matter how much pulling and spraying you do, they come back, often with a vengeance. Designing Spaces Think Green met up with Greg Wallace from Suncor to talk lawn weeds and how to control them with a reduced risk herbicide. Hey Greg. Hey. Thanks for being with us here on Designing Spaces. Thanks, glad to be here. And for hanging out in this yard full of weeds. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> so most people would combat these weeds with like an herbicide, right? Correct. And uh, most people are kind of aware that there are some negative effects with all herbicides on the market, right? Yes. Uh, you know, it's funny, you bring that up, one of the, uh, the biggest misconceptions is uh, overspraying, and that's where we kind of start out with that. Uh, yeah, a lot of people think one or two it says use it, Three or four must be, even be great. Well, that, that's really not the case. Overspraying can create a runoff where the chemical just sits on the ground and is eventually absorbed into the ground where it can stay for a significant time. And then what that does is it's burning the top of the leaf, but it's not killing the root. So a couple days later, a couple weeks, within a week or so, you're gonna get weeds growing back up. Most herbicides use a formula that is 25 to 40% chemical per volume, making it very toxic because the particles in most weed killers are very large and cannot be absorbed by the weed, creating only a top burn on the weed, not killing the root. So you guys specialize in its uh, reduced risk herbicide? Yeah, yeah we, uh, our, our product Clear Choice uh, is a reduced risk selective herbicide. And what that means is, uh, selective means that it's okay to use in a lawn. It's not gonna hurt the lawn out there. Clear Choice is a product that basically we create it using less than 0.05%. People say, well, you know, how do you do that? Is it watered down? And the answer is no, it's not. This is due to a technology that reduces the size of the particle in the formula, allowing them to be absorbed on impact. The technology is that we reduce the size of the particles. We make them smaller than it pours on a plant. So now what happens is once you spray it onto the weed, it begins to be absorbed right on impact. Looks like we got some serious offenders right here. A couple yep. different kinds. Yeah, it's certainly, uh, we can certainly have a field day here. <laughs> and I see you brought the product, a nice little herbicide that can take care of this. Yeah, uh, this is a clear choice. This is our reduced risk selective herbicide. And so is it just one spray per plant or per area or? Uh, it's one spray per plant. The formula travels through a mineral oil water mix, which makes the spraying process very visible. A thick liquid that adheres to the weed not only helps absorption, but also prevents drifting. Drifting is not good, especially this is a windy day here. Exactly. Uh, if other uh, herbicides, when you do spray them, you'll spray it, it gets caught in the wind, it'll go over to a flower bed. A couple days later, you have some dead flowers. That's not any good. Nobody wants if that. If you can see here, wherever I point and shoot, it's pretty much sticking right onto that weed right there. Just point and shoot. This 24 ounce ready to use spray, if used properly, will give off up to 200 sprays. And any of this runoff, as I mentioned earlier too, this is basically gonna be absorbed into the ground and within three weeks, it's gonna be broken up. It is biodegradable. And when can we see results? Uh, you should begin to see results uh, within 24 hours. Go kill weeds. <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, where could our viewers at home 
learn more about this product? Uh, visit our website. It's uh, todaysclearchoice.com. Uh, you can find information out about Clear Choice as well as other products that we offer. Um, and most importantly, where can the product be purchased? Thank you so much, Greg. Pleasure, Andrew. And you can visit that link on our website, designingspaces.tv, where you can click on the Think Green section and see this part of the show again. For Designing Spaces Think Green, I'm Andrew Cragen from Southwest Ranches, Florida. We all want clean water and a healthier ecosystem. We also want to find ways to lower our cost of living while maintaining efficient households. The technologies are here now, and they're improving our lifestyles and the environment. Let's keep moving in the right direction towards a healthier world. For Designing Spaces Think Green, I'm Ted Brunson. You can visit these websites to learn more about the participants on this edition of Designing Spaces.